What's up guys, Mike Tierney here from Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about sizing your heaters. So when you come to the stores, you're looking at heaters, whether you're shopping online or you know actually looking at product on the shelf. Quite often a heater, depending on you know, the, the manufacturer or, or whoever's supplying it to, to our stores, will advertise square footage. So you'll find that on the boxes, you'll find it on literature, you'll find it on descriptions within the, the websites. Now, when we talk about square footage, it can become misleading. So yes, we're going to have a space that is X amount of square feet, but we're not really heating the floor as such. We want to heat the space around that room or in that shop or that garage, wherever it is you're heating. So that's rated as cubic feet. Now there's all kinds of mathematical formulas that uh, we can inundate you with, but I'm going to give you an example of how by looking at cubic feet and sizing it by that versus just reading the spec on a box, will actually change the size of heater that you need. So the rated square footage, let's say might be 24 by 24. So that gets us around 576 square feet, but that's the floor space. What about the ceiling height? So all the heaters are designed at a 10 foot ceiling spec. So when they say that it can heat up to 1500 square feet, that's assuming you have a 10 foot ceiling. Well, what if your shop isn't that? Maybe it has a 16 foot or a 20 foot. Well, that, that same square footage now has almost double the cubic feet. So that heater wouldn't be able to keep up at a 16 or 20 foot ceiling than it would at a 10 foot ceiling. So be really mindful when you start looking at the kinds of heaters you're, you wanna use, depending on whatever application it is. But typically if you're, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to heat up a shop or any of that, you wanna stay within the cubic feet. And if you're not sure, you can visit our stores. You can go to one of our team members and we have an online calculator that's you know, specific to us that you can just give your numbers to them. They can plug that in and that we can calculate the exact BTUs per hour for your space. Now there's another flip side to that. What they don't tell you is that you need to know the difference between the temperature outside and what your desired temperature is inside. So if you plan on working out, you know, when it's minus 30 outside, but you want about a temperature of 10 degrees inside, well, that's a 40 degree change. And you need to know those numbers because that substantially changes your heater sizes. The colder it is outside versus the temperature you want inside, changes those temperature increases and that will give you very different BTU ratings. So there's a couple of mathematical formulas that are really simple if you, you know, if you want to try it and want to kind of really dig down on, you know, what size heater before you come and visit us. It's simple. All you need to do is calculate your cubic feet of the space, the temperature increase, so that would be the difference of temperatures. And then there's a constant. For Celsius, it's 0.2394. And in Fahrenheit numbers, it's 0.133. So if you take your cubic feet, multiply that by your temperature increase, and then multiply that by your constant, depending on your Celsius or Fahrenheit, you'll get your BTU per hour requirement for your exact space at your exact temperature ranges. What I would suggest though, is think about when you plan on working in those temperature ranges. Are you going to be working in a temperature range all the time at minus 30 or just dabbling here and there? Always go by the lowest temperature that you will possibly be working in because if you don't size the heater at that temperature, then it might not work out for your application. You can always turn the heater down. So regardless of the style of heater, whether you wanna go through a convection style heater, a radiant heater, forced air heater, whether it's fossil fuels, propane, diesel, gas, jet fuel, 
or the electric side, sizing them to your specific building, your specific application is really important. And that's how you're going to get the best selection out of your heater by using those calculations. Now, if math's not your thing, go and visit our store and they can help you out with those calculations. Well, that's it for Tech Tips with Mike T. We'll see you next time.